Hi, I'm Jane Gibbons, and I'm an instructional designer here at Unicon. Welcome to the first episode of What Can an Instructional Designer Do For Me? In this episode, we're going to talk a bit about what instructional design is. Think back to a time when you may have taken a training or a course online. How did you feel about taking the course? How did you feel about it after completion? What could have been done differently? My colleague, Sue Livingston, is also an instructional designer at Unicon. She told me about her first experiences with online courses. Thanks for the introduction, Jane. I will tell you about my experience. I recall the first online course I took through a community college. I was the mother of a young child and took an accounting course online. How convenient. I never have to leave my home, and I can do this while my child sleeps. What do I need? Computer? Check. Textbook? Check. Accounting paper? Coffee? Check. And I'm often logging into the school's learning management system, or the LMS. The coffee was key to my success here because the course was less than thrilling. It was not the subject that I found mundane, but the repetition of what I did week after week. Read the textbook, do the weekly assignment, post the weekly assignment to the blog area, take a quiz, and await my grade. Second week, third week, and so on. I could have accomplished this entirely on my own. The only thing this course did for me was to give me credit hours on a transcript. Fast forward over 10 years. Now I am a mom with two kids and I want to get my master's degree. I registered for two classes offered online. Thought of my last online experience and cringed a bit. Computer check, no textbook. Awesome. Coffee check. And I'm once again logging into the school's LMS. The course description and layout of the course is easy to follow. The amount of posts that a student must contribute to the blog almost seemed daunting at first. The first assignment is to introduce myself, post a profile picture, and respond to three other classmates' introductions. Huh, this is different than my last experience. Next, we have reading and video assignments. What? No death by textbook or PowerPoint? Our second blog post is summarizing the main ideas of the reading and video. I also need to comment on others' summaries. We're graded on the quality of these responses. This is our grade for the week. There are no quizzes? Okay. I was thoroughly engaged in this class and truly learned the material. I asked Sue what she thought the difference was between the two courses. She said it was the instructional design. The first online course had a typical read, lecture, quiz approach. Sue tells us how this course could have been designed better. How could it have been designed better? The best learning experiences come from a well-designed course that plans for the following, managing cognitive load, providing frequent activities and feedback, and engaging the learner. Cognitive load. Cognitive load refers to the amount of information that your working memory can take in at one time. Imagine a glass being filled with water and the glass just keeps spilling water out of the top because it can't hold anymore. This is why good instructional design requires chunking information into digestible amounts. How do we break it up? In the first course, I read much information before being quizzed on it or receiving any feedback on it. I did not truly know if I processed and understood the information I read until the end of the chapter. That was a very large chunk of information. This could have been broken up into smaller chunks with activities that enhance the learning about the particular topic to help reduce the cognitive load. This would have allowed me to think about what I learned and I would have had an idea of what I needed to review. Frequent feedback and activities can take many forms. As I mentioned about the second course I took, I had frequent feedback. That daunting amount of blog posts? Turns out it was for my own good. The feedback was also rich, enabling me to know why or how I was incorrect or why I was correct. It encouraged me to think about what I learned and to know what I needed to review. Think of frequent feedback as a checkpoint to see if the cup is already full. In addition to chunking the information and providing feedback, it is crucial to engage the learner. Is the way the information presented varied and interesting? There are many tools that can be used for online learning that can engage the learner. Are you using videos, animation, narration? 
images, text, and other delivery methods to engage the learner? Engagement is key to motivating the learner. An engaged learner will have the motivation to learn and complete the course. Thanks, Sue. So, are you starting to think about how your courses can be designed? What does your course do right? What could be improved upon? Hopefully, what you've heard today will help to ensure that you are motivating and not frustrating your learners. I'm Jane Gibbons, and I hope you'll join me for the next episode of What Can an Instructional Designer Do For Me? And thanks for watching.